welcome today to Rejoice and See with Ty and Betsy Tice. Our podcast today is Miracle on the Snow Pass. Our Bible reading begins with Nehemiah 9, verses 6 through 22. Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. Thou hast made heaven the heaven of heavens with all their host, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. Thou art the Lord, the God, who didst choose Abram, and broughtest him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees, and gavest him the name of Abraham, and foundest his heart faithful before thee, and madest a covenant with him, to give the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Jebusites, and the Girgashites, to give it, I say, to his seed, and has performed thy words, for thou art righteous." And did see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt, and heardest their cry by the Red Sea, and showest signs and wonders upon Pharaoh and all his servants, and on all the people of his land. For thou knewest that they dealt proudly against them. So didst thou get thee a name as it is this day. And thou did divide the Red Sea before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on dry land. And their persecutors thou threwest into the deeps, as a stone into the mighty waters. Moreover, thou leadest them in the day by a cloudy pillar, and in the night by a pillar of fire, to give them light in the way wherein they should go. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai, and speaketh with them from heaven, and gaveth them right judgments, and true laws, good statures, statures, and commandments. And madest known unto them thy holy Sabbath, and commandest them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses thy servant. And gave us them bread from heaven for their hunger, and brought us forth water for them out of the rock for their thirst, and promised them that they should go in to possess the land which thou hadst sworn to give them. But they and our fathers dealt proudly and hardened their necks, and hearkened not to thy commandments and refused to obey, neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks, and in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. But thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and forsooketh them not. Yea, when they had made them a molten calf, and said, This is thy God that brought thee up out of Egypt, and had wrought great provocations, yet thou in thy manifold mercies forsookest them not in the wilderness. The pillar of the cloud departed not from them by day to lead them in the way, neither the pillar of fire by night to show them light and the way wherein they should go. Thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them, and withheldest not thy manna from their mouth, and gavest them water for their thirst. Yea, forty years didst thou sustain them in the wilderness, so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes waxed not old, and their feet swelled not. Moreover, thou gavest them kingdoms and nations, and didst divide them into corners. So they possessed the land of Sihon, and the land of the king of Heshbon, and the land of Og, king of Bashan. Consider especially verses 20 through 22. Today's Bible reading 
tells that the Lord provided for the children of Israel during the wilderness journey. Not only did he provide manna and water, but their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell. And one here who has a swollen foot, I can appreciate that. Today's story, Ty and Betsy needed a miracle. They were returning from the home of their friends on New Year's Eve after midnight. They had enjoyed a great time of fun together, playing Uno, and had neglected to fill up their gas tank. The area in which they were traveling was an isolated one at the time, with a hill at the end, the Sonoa Pass. The car had stalled out and stopped because it was out of gas. Betsy put her hand on the dashboard and began to pray, almost in a whisper at first. Ty found the whispered prayers to be annoying until he tried the starter and the car started. Now he said, Keep praying! It's working! Betsy continued to pray until they had gone over the Sonoa Pass. At the bottom of the hill, they arrived at a gas station, and the car sputtered and stopped by the pump. Once again, God had miraculously provided the needs of his people. Here's verses to ponder. Matthew seventeen twenty, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. And also consider Romans ten seventeen. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Let me, at this time, kind of stop and share a little bit with you about that Sano Pass experience. The reason why I was frustrated is because we were going to a church that was full of the Holy Ghost, and I had partially experienced it, but hadn't come fully into it. So Betsy's whispered prayers almost sounded like tongues, which I wasn't at the time really quite sure of yet. But I knew that God was doing something. And when she continued to pray and the car started, that's when I gained my faith, not until something happened. Sometimes we gain our faith when other people's faith is embellished upon us, or should I say imparted to us. But let me say this, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Today's prayer, Lord Jesus, help us to saturate ourselves in your presence and with your word so that in the time of crisis, we will have the faith to obtain your provision for our need and the needs of those around us. Let us light Peter. Give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word, as Acts 6, 4 says. And all the saints this morning said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, my friend.
And you will 